Hello and welcome to the Phone Burner training today. This is the Don't Be Complicated training series. I am your host, Jeff Osnes. If you need to reach out to me, feel free to send me an email, jeff at phoneburner.com. I'd be happy to help out any way I can. In today's topic, we're going to talk about emails within Phone Burner. All right, so there are a couple different ways you can go about sending emails within Phone Burner. However, before you go through and and send an email, we probably want to create the email first. So let's talk about creating emails first, and then we'll talk about sending. So we're going to go to the Dial Sessions tab, click on that. Then we're going to click on the Phone Burner Settings button. On the Phone Burner Settings page, we're going to click on the Message Library. This is where you can go to create emails and scripts, uh, phone scripts. We're not going to cover phone scripts here. We're going to talk about creating a new one-touch email. However, there's also a section down here that a lot of people don't know exists is the appoint, appointment emails. And creating appointment emails is very similar to creating a one-touch email. So we're actually just going to go through the process of creating a one-touch email and you can carry that knowledge down through the appointment email. So let's talk about creating a new one-touch email. We're going to click on the add new one-touch email and it walks you through step by step how to create it. If you need help along the way there's these little question mark bubbles that you can click on to get more details but first thing we need to do is select the category types or the contact types. I always just select all, all categories with Phone Burner because that's all that matters with us. Uh, one touch email name this is for your eyes only so let's call this one our uh, super awesome follow up and then the subject hey John it was nice talking to you you'll notice I used the name John in here I did that just to kinda illustrate uh, what we're gonna do here in a little bit which is we're gonna make it so that the system will personalize the subject line for each of our contacts uh, so I just put John in there just so just to help illustrate that and we'll actually be replacing that shortly uh, the one touch email description I always leave that blank usually my names are descriptive enough for me but if you want to add more description go for it so now let's actually start creating the email this is the actual body of the email so we're gonna go ahead and say hi only rather than putting in a contacts name we're gonna use what's called a personalization code so we do recipients first name and that'll put in the recipients first name but we also want to use this code up here and so we're going to switch to this HTML mode and we're going to copy this code. Just the brackets, you know, everything within those brackets and we're going to replace just the word John with the code. So we use that code there and that will tell the system to automatically insert you know Billy Bob's name, you know the contacts name. But now back to the message we're going to switch back to our pretty uh, what you see what you get viewer we're gonna put a comma at the end of that, go to our next line, and let's say our email, we're just gonna do something simple here, I just wanna give you, you know, illustrate what you can do here, so we're gonna do something like, hey, it was nice talking with you, and as we discussed, here is my uh, link to my site. So do that, also another little helpful hint, uh, helpful hint is if you just want to go down one line, if you hold down the control button, it'll do just one line. But by default, the system will do double spacing. Let's go ahead and enter a website link. So let's say I want to direct people to http colon slash slash phoneburner.biz and I want them to click on click here Boom. Now we've got click here there. Now we'll go down and do my signature line here. Have a super day. And then I can type my name in. And then this would be a good time when you want to do a single click. And maybe I want to put my email address in. Another thing you could do if you wanted to have the system automatically insert data for you, especially if you're a team leader and you're, and you're creating emails for your group, then you'd want to use the personalization codes for the sender's name and email and phone so that the system will merge that data in. 
based off the account that's using it. So if you're just creating an, these emails for yourself and only for you, then typing in your name is just fine. But if you're creating them for a group, make sure you use the personalization codes. We can also add a picture. So if we wanted to add a picture, we just click on this icon. And we can choose a file from our computer. A little headshot here. It'll upload it, and it'll upload it in full resolution, as you're noticing here. So we don't want it to be that big in our actual email. So I'm going to go ahead and shrink that down. So now it's just my picture at the bottom, a lot smaller. And so you can upload your logos. I've got a few guys that they have their signature line as an image, and then they just, uh, they just upload that. The cool thing about uploading images is once you've uploaded them, the next time you want to insert an image, you can actually just choose one from the file you know, from, that's been uploaded. So you'll see I've actually uploaded that one a few times. But if I wanted to add a different image, I could do that. So you've got all your different choices for images. Or if the image is hosted online somewhere, you can actually put a link to the image in there. So lots of options for images. Once you've done that, uh, once you've got your email created, you're happy with it, you can do your formatting, you know, bold, italics, underline, uh, backgrounds, uh, font color, font size, all of that stuff. Once you're happy with it, you just hit Save Changes. The email will be saved. And now we can go to our emails and scripts. And we'll see our super awesome email is now on our list here. Um, if you wanted to create a new appointment email, you can do the same thing down here and it would be on your list. If you are a team leader and you're developing emails for your group, don't forget to share the email with your organization. Otherwise, they will not see it when they want to use it in their account. So don't forget the share option as a team leader. All right, so now that we have created our OneTouch emails or our emails, now we need to actually use them. The first thing we're going to talk about is in the buttons. We can actually assign emails to go out based off the buttons we press during a dial session. So we're going to click on dial sessions. We're going to go to phone burner settings. We're going to click on custom buttons. And here we've got all of our buttons. We've got our disposition sets. So that new super awesome email that we created, let's say I wanted to add that to one of my one of my emails here. Maybe this uh, maybe this is the email I want to go out for this button. I just edit the button. Let me show you that real quick again. Find the button you want to edit. Click on the little edit this button icon over here. Click on the follow up message drop down. Locate the email that you want to use. Save. That's all you have to do. So uh, after you've done that, once you, have, once you set that, anytime you press that specific button, that email will go out. Oh, another thing that I should point out is on the dial sessions, phone burner settings, dialer basics, right here, automatic email delivery. If you just want to quickly turn off email or turn on email without having to go in and edit each individual button, you can switch this to no or yes, depending on whether or not you want emails going out. So that's a quick on off switch. And that's global. So once you switch that off, then it stops sending the emails out automatically. So keep that in mind. So that's a quick and easy way to disable everything. Now another way that you can send an email is from the contacts. So we're going to click on contacts. And if you've got a, a contact in here, you just click on their name. So maybe you already did a dial session and you talked to the contact, but an email didn't go out. And you want to send a follow-up email still. So you just open up their details and click on send email. That'll bring up the email creator. You can either start from scratch type a new subject and a new body or you can select an email from your templates and this is why I personally set all of my emails up to be uh, to be available in all categories or all folders that way it'll always show up in my drop down menu now you can as you build out different emails you can set certain emails to only be visible when you're looking at certain folders but uh, if you don't have a ton of emails that doesn't matter it's only when you get into where you've got dozens and dozens of emails that you want to start separating that stuff out to kinda of keep this drop down menu a little bit cleaner so I hope that makes sense but after you've selected your email from the uh, from the pre-written email drop down you can actually edit this before you send it if you'd like 
you know you don't have to send it as is you could add more to it take away from it but once you're ready to send it you just hit the send email button and the system will send the email you'll get that message saying that it was sent and then it would be sent off to that contact um, another cool thing about the email is it is tracked so if we were to go and open that email so I'm gonna go ahead and do a send and receive here just got the email it just came in now if I go back to my home look at this I just sent one touch email was sent one touch email was opened if I went back into those details in the activity of that contact one touch email to Jeff was sent and it was open so the system tracks not only the sending of the emails now but the opening of the emails so you can really stay on top of your contacts who's doing what and all that good stuff so now another another way that you can send emails is in the dial session so I actually want to show you uh, some options in the dial session itself so we're gonna click here to do a phone burner session just to this one contact because we don't need lots of contacts in this case so we're gonna go ahead and select that contact begin the dial session we can choose our phone script if we want one our voicemail our uh, disposition set and then continue and now we're just gonna call in to the system to connect So here we're calling our contact. Hi, don't click the leave voice. So we called the contact. We just had our conversation with the contact. Um, if we've set up the buttons to send specific emails, that will happen automatically. However, if you decide after you've talked to the contact that the default email that's going to go out is not what you want to have sent out, you can actually change the email on the fly. So you can say email to send, click on it choose the new email lock it in and now no matter what button you press the system is going to send the email that you just locked in so you could click on any one of the buttons and no matter what those buttons are set to send it will send the super awesome follow-up email or whichever email that is that you've selected and locked in now I did promise to tell you how to use this the uh, follow-up emails so if we click on uh, or the appointment emails we click on the schedule follow-up button here and if we schedule a follow-up email with one of our contacts or a follow-up appointment sorry follow-up appointment with one of our contacts so we schedule that appointment we can tell the system to send us one of our appointment or not send us to send the contact an appointment email so I'm gonna go ahead and select that save changes that adds the appointment to my calendar I'm now done with this contact and let me go ahead and do a send and receive here and here's the appointment that I just scheduled and this is a very basic appointment email it just has the uh, the uh, title of the meeting the description of the meeting and the date and time of the meeting and then my name at the end but you can obviously make this look a lot prettier than this is but that is the uh, that is the appointment email and so those are your different uh, sending options I'm gonna go ahead and end this session Goodbye. and so that is uh, the uh, emails uh, options you know all of the different email options within phone burner I hope that's given you a little bit of uh, details or help along the way and real quickly let's go over phone burner pricing again phone burner has a 7.5 hour plan for 6750 a month it includes 450 minutes of usage and email and phone support
Uh, we also have an unlimited plan for $149 a month. You can use it all day long and you've got email and phone support. If you are looking for multiple user accounts where you need, uh, where you've got a lot of guys that are going to be making a lot of calls, uh, we do offer discounts for groups and the discount goes up the more users you have. So uh, feel free to reach out to me if you have questions about that. I can talk to you about the different options and get you some specific pricing for what you're looking for. And uh, without, uh, without further ado, if you don't have a phone burner account, go get one today at phoneburner.biz and happy dialing.